last session we were seeing that how we are representing the practical transformer practical transformer from the ideal transformer if you are adding the resistance and leakage reactance and primary and secondary winding to the ideal transformer it will have practical a transformer if this practical transformer is connected to load then how to draw the perfect tire diagram for the the different load condition that we will see in this particular session that is a transformer on load then we have to draw the the back tire diagram for the the transformer when it is connected to different types of loads start with the transformer on load just you have to recall the primary is represented by R1 and X1 and a primary winding then the applied voltage is V1 and then the, the induced voltage is E1 and similarly we are drawing the uh, circuit for the secondary winding having resistance R2 and X2 then the E2 is the induced voltage in the second here the V2 is the terminal voltage and the I2 is the load current I2 is the, the load current here we are connecting a load then you have to write the equation for the V1 and E1 that is here in the primary side V1 is the source whereas in the secondary the E2 is the source that is how to get the V1 to get the V1 you have to add I1 R1 drop I1 R1 drop and I1 X1 drop to the E1 then so that you are getting the, the applied voltage V1 similarly to get the secondary induced voltage E2 then you have to add I2 X2 drop plus I2 X2 drop to the V2 so that I am getting the, the E2 that is the same thing is written in the form of an equation that is V1 that is a V1 is nothing but E1 plus I1 R1 plus I1 X1 all these are vectors therefore I am writing here that is a V1 is equal to E1 that is E1 plus I1 R plus J X1 that is I am representing this in the complex form that is it is a inductive reactance therefore it is represented by J X1 therefore I am writing here I1 into bracket R1 plus J X1 is the total impedance of the, the primary circuit that is a primary current multiplied by the primary impedance or in other words it is E1 plus I1 Z1 Z1 is the but R1 plus J X1 that is it is represented once again it is in the vector form that is E1 plus I1 Z1 use the V1 similarly if you look into the secondary winding that is the induced voltage in the secondary winding E2 is equal to V2 plus I2 R2 that is in the secondary impedance that is R2 plus JX2 that is I2 into bracket R2 plus JX2 that is the impedance of the secondary if you are multiplying corresponding current what you are getting, getting here is the impedance drop if the impedance drop is added to V2 then what I am getting is E2 therefore it is V2 plus I2 Z. Then before drawing the, the vector diagram for different load conditions some of the important points we have to remember here in the vector diagram whenever if you are drawing a vector for a resistive drop there is a drawn parallel to the, the current vectors it is very very important that is if you are drawing the resistive drop then they are drawn parallel to the or to the current vectors whereas the reactive drops are drawn perpendicular to the current vectors you have to remember this thing okay that is if you are drawing a resistive drop it should be parallel to the the corresponding current then if you are drawing a reactor drop it should be 90 degree to the corresponding the current vector the angle between the V1 and I1 is called as the, the primary side of factor Pi1. However, generally, the
the power factor of the uh, transfer voltage is defined for the with respect to the secondary therefore the angle between the V2 and I2 that is called as phi2 that gives the power factor angle of the, the transformer. With this background then suppose I am connecting here lagging power factor. I am connecting a lagging power factor then how to draw the, the vector diagram that we will see step by step. First it is a connected a lagging power factor loop. Then I am drawing a reference axis x and y axis. Then I will start with <coughs> the we are starting from the, the flux first. Then there is a use voltage E2 and E1. From E2 and E1, only we are getting V1 and the V2. Okay, we will see that one first. First, I am having a flux. Because whenever the current I0 is playing, it is creating a magnetic flux. That is a flux. Because of this flux, which is linking both primary and secondary, there are induced voltage E1 and E2 they are inducing in the primary and secondary winding respectively. The phase of this E1 and E2, they are in a such a way that these are lagging the flux phi by an angle of 90 degree. Therefore, I am drawing here first E1. Then I am interested in the phase of E1 to get V1 that is the, the direction is exactly opposite to the this applied voltage therefore I am drawing here minus E1 here. <coughs> so that to this E1, to this E1 I am adding I1 R1 and I1 X1 so that I am getting the V1. Then how to get the E2? The E2 you are getting from V2 and the impedance stop in the second unit. Then what should be the phase of E2? Phase of the E2 should be all along the, this axis. Means it has to lag phi by an angle of 90. Therefore, to get E2 here, then you have to take your V2 and I2 in this particular quadrant. So that your ultimate resultant E2 should be from this particular axis. Therefore, just uh, to get E2, what I have to draw is first, arbitrarily you have to draw V2 in this particular corner. Therefore, I am drawing V2. Then, I have to draw the current I2. Here, what is the phase displacement in V2 and I2? What is the phase displacement in V2 and I2? It is depending upon the type of load. Type of load. Here it is a lagging load. Therefore, you have to draw I2 vector such that it has to lag V2. Lag means it is the clockwise direction. Means you have to draw a current vector in such a way that it has to lag V2 by an angle of phi. That is, you have to draw your own. This is the arbitrary V2 and I2 you have to draw in this particular quadrant. So that ultimately we are getting E2 here. Then to V2 what you add? First you have to add I2 R2, you have to add I2 R2 to V2, then I told you this I2 R2 you have to draw in a such a way that it is a parallel to the I2. I given here, the vectors for a register drops are drawn parallel to the current vectors. Then where you have to add I2 R2, you have to add I2 R2 to the tip of V2 so that it is parallel to the I2 because the resistive drop are drawn parallel to I2 then where you add to the tip of V2. Therefore, I am drawing here I2 R2 I2 R2 to tip of V2 so that it is parallel to this I2. Then to the tip of I2 R2 what I have to add? I have to add I2 H2. I told you the reactor stroke always drawn perpendicular to this I2, perpendicular to I2. Then where you have to add that I2H2 to the tip of the I2. R2. Therefore, I am drawing here the vector I2H2 such that it is making an angle of 90 degree to this I2. Therefore, I am drawing here I2H2. This I2H2 is perpendicular to I2 because it is a reactor stop always drawn perpendicular to this. How to draw perpendicular? Just you have to extend this 
then you have to from the tip of I2 you have to add I times. Then the sum of V2, I2 R2 and I2 H2 is nothing but your E2. Therefore, your E2 vector is fall all along the, the negative y axis. That is your total. That is the simple procedure. That is first you have to draw. Have to go back. The first you have to draw the flux pipe. Then the induced voltage lagging. My angle of 90 degree in the primary. The same factor that is the direction in direction of motion to the V1 I have drawn exactly opposite. Then I am choosing the terminal voltage V2 and I2 that depending upon the power factor angle, it is a lagging in the nature. Then what I am interested in is E2 so that I am adding I2 R2 which is in phase with I2 that is you have to draw I2 R2 this is parallel to this parallel to this and add to this tip of this I2 R2 I2 H2 this should be perpendicular to this I2 so that I, what I am getting is E2. This is how we have to find out the, the value of E2. The, our next objective is to find out V1. V1 we are getting from E1. That is E1 is it is a phase of motion. Therefore, I am taking this as a in the minus E1. You should not see that you have to add I1 R1 to this. No, because to the direction you have to take that is that is a minus sign gives the, the direction of with respect to V1. Therefore, drawn E1 here. To this E1, what I have to add I1 R1 and I1 X. Therefore, how to get I1? To get I1, you need the two currents. One is I0 and I1 dash. First, you have to draw I0 and I1 dash. Then find out I1. Then add I1, R1 and I1. Then you have to proceed with drawing the, the current I1 dash. That is I2. That is I1 dash is exactly opposite to I2 and its magnitude is k times i2. Then at the same time I am drawing i0 lagging an angle of phi0. Then if we are adding i1 dash and i0 then what I am getting here is the total current i1. Once we know the i1 then you can find out i1 r1. That is, you have to find out I1 R1. You have to add to this even. Means you have to add to the minus E1. Why you should not take it is not a minus E1. It minus sign shows the, the direction of the induced voltage. Okay. To the tip of this, what I have to add is I1 R1. You have to draw the I1 R1 such that it is parallel to the, the I1 because it is a resistive drop. Therefore, I am drawing here I1 R1. This I1 R1 vector is parallel to this. That is in phase voltage. Then to that what I have to add is I1 X1. It should be perpendicular to I1. Therefore, I am drawing here I1 X1. Okay. Then sum of E1, I1 R1 plus I1 X1 vectorially, what I am getting here is the total applied voltage V. This is a V1. Therefore, the sum of I, I1 R1, I2 X2 is nothing but your the impedance drop that is represented by I2 Z2. Similarly, sum of the resistive drop plus reactor drop is called as impedance drop of the, the primary that is shown as I1 Z1. And the angle between the V1 and the I1 that gives the, the power factor of the, the primary of the, the transformer. This is how you have to draw the circuit diagram. You start with E1 minus E1. Then place the V2 and I2 depending upon the lagging leading power factor. Then you have to proceed further. Now we will take up the, the vector diagram for leading power factor. Once again, the equations remain same. That is, equation remains the same. That is, V1, E1, E1 plus I1, R1, Jx1 plus E1, I1, Z1. Or it is E2 is equal to V2, R2 into bracket R2 plus Jx2. 
or V2 plus IZ. The same equation, but the only thing is that here it is a case of lagging, it is a lagging current, I2 is lagging. In the next case, it is a leading, that is a leading power factor. In the case of unity power factor, V2 and I2 are in phase. Okay, that is only the difference. Okay, that we we'll see here. Okay. First, once again, you have to take the reference axis. Then draw E1. Draw the in magnitude and the direction minus E1. Then you have to place your the time and voltage V2. Then here it is a leading power factor. Therefore, current I2 has to be lead V2 means you have to draw in this direction. In the lagging, you are drawing in this direction. For leading, you have to draw in this direction. Therefore, I am drawing I2. Then the angle between these two is the phi2. That is, first you have to draw these two factors. Then to the V2, you have to add I2 R2 that is parallel to I2. Here I am drawing the I0 also. That is like in phi0. Then what I am drawing here is I1 R2. I1, sorry, I2 R2. That is a voltage drop in the, the secondary. I2 R2, which is parallel to the I2, which is parallel to the I2. To the tip of this I2 R2, I2 add I2 into X2. I2 into X2. This I2 X2 vector is perpendicular to this because it is an inductive drop. Therefore, I am adding here I2 X2. Then sum of V2 plus I2 R2 plus I2 X2, what we are getting is the E2 is this. This is the E2 is the, the induced voltage in the secondary pipe. Now, we will go for the the primary side. To the E1, what I have to add? I1 R1. Still, I don't know what is the value of I1. First, you have to get I1. Then, I0 I have got. Then, you have to find out what is the I1 dash. By drawing I1 dash exactly opposite to I2 and magnitude is K times I2. That is I1 dash. Then, if you are adding I1 dash I0, then what I am getting here is the current I1. Once I know the value of I1, then add I1 R1 to E1 here so that I am getting I1 R1 here which is once again parallel to I1 because corresponding current it has to be drawn parallel that is resistive drops. Then I1 X1 which is perpendicular to I1 and sum of E1 plus I1 R1 plus I1 X1, what I am getting is the V. Then we know that I2 R2 plus I2 X2 is I2 Z. That is, in other words, E2 is nothing but V2 plus I2 Z. Is it not? That is, V2 plus I2 Z is E2. To show that one, I drawn here I2 Z. That is, I2 R2. I2 X2 is nothing but I2 Z2 or directly it is V2 plus I2 Z2. V2 plus I2 Z2. Similarly, in the case of the primary, it is sum of I1 R1 plus I1 X2, X1 is nothing but I1 Z2. Okay. Then the angle between the V1 and I1 is the primary uh, transformer, primary power factor angle. This is how you have to draw the, the vector term for leading. Only thing is that you have to fix these two, the V2 and I2, then you have to draw the, the rest of the, the things. Similarly, for unity power factor, the rest of the equations are same, only the phase displacement between I2 and V2, they are in phase in the case of unity power factor. The unity power factor, V2 and I2 are in phase. That is the only thing. That is the flux, once again E1, minus E1, V2 I am taking here, then here I2 should be in phase with V2 because it is a unity power factor. It is a unity power factor. Therefore, I am drawing here. V2 and I2 are in same phase. Then, the next what you have, it is I2 R2 which is